and welcome to Colorado. I'm Kevin Torres. This year you and I witnessed so many incredible things while gallivanting around our gorgeous state. We visited countless communities, captured magnificent moments, and met some pretty darn incredible people too. Like the fellow you're about to meet, who at age 92 is still having a ball. Catch the ball, please. Now I don't want to jinx his record. Shh, knock on wood. Where's wood? But there's one player in particular. Hey, it's going, Harry. We'll yeah. see you on TV. <laughs> Who's stepping up. Now remember, this is just a game for fun. You <laughs> and about to hit a historic milestone. <laughs> his name? Hi, hey, Harry. Is Harry Iwakar. Come on, Dick. You can do it. And he's part of a senior softball league. If you could look at some other people even so much younger than him, they don't do as good. He's really good. You have to be 70 to be a part of Harry's team. Right up the center. There you go. But this fella caught them all off guard when they discovered his age. I'm 92, born in 1926. I'll be 93 in October. Harry's stretch with softball dates back to 1990. I was 65, 64 at the time. Before that, he simply loved to rock. Years ago when my wife was living, I would carry her backwards up a hill, and that kept my legs in good shape. Let it go, Harry! Now at 92, Harry's talent has turned him into a treasure. These are senior softball World Series rings. Royalty, some say, with 17 rings. I have uh, a couple of most valuable players. They have two outs. Even after he was inducted into the Senior Softball Hall of Fame, he hasn't stopped. Oh. Yeah! Because for Harry, this is considered home. It's been a good career all the way through. What a guy. You know, aside from the Eastern Plains, one of my favorite places to visit is Colorado's San Luis Valley. It's full of so much magic and wonder. And as I discovered one spring day in the town of Sawatch, it's also full of fish. This is called Frontier Trout Ranch. Tucked away in the San Luis Valley. We're Colorado's only producer of premium trout for the food market. Is a ranch which raises trout from egg to table. We are a true farm to fork operation. A fellow named Kermit Krantz built the business back in 2013. Like the frog. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and found himself fascinated by fish. How old are these ones right here? These are about uh, four and a half to five months old. Not just one fish. Yeah. Two fish. As you can see, these guys are probably running about uh, two and a half to three fish per pound. Three fish? Uh, we'll start thinning those out. Or blue fish. We currently raise a rainbow trout but nearly half a million trout right here on site. Once they get to about a pound and a half, we start putting them into our large earthen ponds. Crazy career change for a man who used to deal with change. This wasn't your first career path, was it? <laughs> No, it wasn't. Well, changed in dollars. For 32 years, he was a spot in foreign currency trade. I would buy and sell currencies for large corporations. But traded all that in for trout. Happy fish! <laughs> Kerbit works with a distributor, the Shamrock Food Company, to sell his fish to popular places like the Broadway. Yeah, throw some more in. Keep going. But before they get there... We're just trying to... Sane them upstream. We have to round them up here. And trust me, if you think herding cats are an issue, you haven't tried trout. <laughs> A stressful <laughs> task that'll weigh even the most experienced trout rancher down. I think we got some fish issues. But on the upside... They're trout. They love to go upstream. All of this is rather rewarding. They're coming up now. Especially when you're bound. I'd say there's a thousand pounds right here is surrounded by so much beauty i mean come on look at this valley look at the snow around you how can you not beat this oh that's pretty cool you know one of my favorite things about sharing these stories with you folks is the element of surprise and few surprises were as spectacular this year as the one up in longmont at an elementary school where a kind deed rolled into town we are in Mountain View Elementary here in Longmont, Colorado. Gymnasium-based assemblies have always had a reputation for wiping sleepy students out. Give them your best attention. But after Principal Pacone whispered a wakeful wish, their tiny eyes opened with surprise as a new face moved forward. One of our programs is called Treads and Trails. Diana Ralston is with a nonprofit group called Canned Aid. Its goal is to get kiddos, especially in low-income schools, to put down their electronics and explore the outdoors. We partnered with BMX rider Mike Murphitt today. Who wants to know how they do that? And he performed some tricks. Whoa, look, he's standing. Talked about the importance of following their dreams. That was so cool, right, Eliana? 
<laughs> well, by surprising the kiddos like Sophia with some BMX tricks and perhaps this. Does anybody have an, any idea what might be behind these curtains right here? One student guessed giant fries, another said ice cream. I think they're okay. bikes for us, right? And Sophia? Look, bikes for us! Bikes for us! Well, she nailed it. Some were so startled they dipped into a happy dance, all thanks to Candy. We just surprised 47 first graders with brand new bikes and helmets. Awesome. What do you think, Miguel? Yeah, thought so. A piece of kindness pie, thought Elisa Tina. Really excited! And Sophia, well, she jumped for joy. Mm -hmm. You know, 70% of the students here are considered low income, but just look at all those smiles, every single one of them. <laughs> There's nothing richer. Amazing day. These are my favorite. <laughs> well, those are some great kids. This next story, though, takes us up to Steamboat Springs, where a small gesture made a big difference in one woman's life, a gesture she'll never forget. This is the ice rink in Steamboat Springs, Colorado. Howells and Ice Arena might be a small town rink. I know quite a few players on the team. But anyone who's been there will tell you. It's pretty cool to watch them. It churns out some pretty memorable players. We have a lot of great hockey games here. We have the Steamboat Stampede Youth Hockey Association. The high school team's really good. And we have the Steamboat Wranglers, and that's a junior team. Shannon Lukens has seen and called out quite a few. And I'm the announcer of the games, and I have so much fun, and I absolutely love it. But never has she ever met someone with the sort of skills as Kyle Tall. I don't really know exactly how many games I've come to, but quite a few. See, Kyle doesn't play hockey. I was actually paralyzed at the age of two. Um, from a cancerous tumor that wrapped around my spinal cord. His talents lie elsewhere. I am an adaptive ski racer, so working towards making the Paralympic Paralpine team. Kyle's been skiing with the National Sports Center for the Disabled since the 2014 season. In 2018, I got the opportunity to go to Korea with another adaptive organization. He truly loves it. It's freedom, really, because in the chair, you are confined. Not only can Kyle ski, can you see? he can also sing. He's a crowd favorite. Everybody just goes wild because he knocks down the house. Shannon tuned in to Kyle when he started singing the national anthem at the same hockey game she would call. Singing the national anthem is a really cool honor. But it turns out the two had another connection. Unfortunately, I was just diagnosed with it, and October 6th, I had a major surgery. Of course, being someone who had cancer when I was younger, um, I've always supported people who have cancer. Due to her breast cancer diagnosis, Shannon had to sit out from calling a few games until recently. It was a hard thing because it's my first game back from having this huge surgery. To celebrate her return, which just so happened to fall during the annual Pink the Rink game. Which was a game all about breast cancer awareness and all that. Kyle had a special surprise waiting for Shannon while he wowed the crowd. I had no idea what was going on because I'm getting ready for the next song and introducing the starting lineup. I gave her some flowers to kind of commemorate the night and just kind of spread awareness, you know? It was the sweetest thing. It was so thoughtful. Needless to say, that tiny gesture melted the hearts of everyone at the ice arena in a huge way. Anytime you can kind of make just any kind gesture is really an opportunity to change someone's mood, change someone's day. You really nailed it. True sportsmanship doesn't always come in the form of goals and wins. It was a really special night when they all came out on the ice. Sometimes it's shown with kindness and caring. It was good. From a compassionate kid. Just be a good person. The day I filmed that story, Shannon's doctor gave her a call to let her know that she is now cancer free. It's just awesome. You know, over the last decade, I have traveled to every corner of Colorado at least twice. But this next adventure, well, it was something I had never experienced before. It takes us up Independence Pass in between Aspen and Twin Lakes over to Grizzly Reservoir. It was one heck of a drive. We're at an elevation of 10,600 feet up here. In a picturesque yet remote part of Pickin County. About 10 miles as the crow flies from Aspen. I watched as a pickup truck of all things poured out of a pipe. We pretty much use this tunnel all year round. Inside the truck were Glenn and Kim Shriver. We're driving into the east portal of 
the Twin Lakes Tunnel. They live out here, and this nine and a half foot round tunnel is actually their driveway. You could fit a mid-size pickup in here, but not a, not a full size. He reminded me of a certain entrance for a certain superhero. Yeah, well, look up ahead here. It's it is like a bad cave. Coupled in. So then we pop out of here and with one super view. There's Grizzly Reservoir. You know, up until this moment, I had never seen such a colorfully saturated spot in our state. It's kind of a Caribbean blue. But for Glenn and Kim, they wake up and walk out to this view every single day. It's a great place. You see, their jobs are key when it comes to caring for some of our largest communities' drinking water. This is where we control the water and the water flow through the tunnel. They're water caretakers who help collect water from over 45 square miles on the west side of Independence Pass. Pretty ugly land out here, huh? Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to take. <laughs> they make sure it gets to municipalities like Aurora, Colorado Springs, and Pueblo, to name a few. It goes from here, four miles through the Continental Divide, comes out in Lake Creek, goes down the canyon to Twin Lakes. Twin Lakes is a place to hold water until they need it down for the, further downstream. So, The spring and summer months are their busiest times of year. During the winter, things get a little slow. They're actually locked in from December 1st to about mid-May. Last winter, we binged on Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> and when they're not catching up on series, they're fixing equipment, plowing, and doing a ton of other things. So pretty much this trash all came out of the lake. Not only do they get free housing along the reservoir, but they also don't have to deal with any noisy neighbors. Yep, got a little breeze blowing today. Just beautiful views in a spectacular part of That's our good. state. We love it. Driving through that tunnel is not for the faint of heart. All right, so the Colorado Ballet just wrapped up its 59th season of the Nutcracker. Going into its 60th season, though, it needs some help to replace something old by doing something new. This is Colorado Ballet's home. Right along Santa Fe Drive in Denver. It's uh, the Armstrong Center for Dance. You'll find a nutty situation needing to be cracked. For every step, swoop, and sound serenading this studio nice, good. sits a silent problem looming around the ballet's most popular program. I actually call Nutcracker our Black Friday. <laughs> For 59 years, the Nutcracker's dancers have attracted 55 to 60,000 people per show. Nice, you're fine, you're beautiful. But for 33 of those years, the performers have been wearing the same old costumes and standing in front of the same old sets. Our costume uh, mistresses, they have to constantly be repairing them because they're falling apart. You know, the sets, I just one wrong move and you bump into the wing and something will split and we have to take it down. Sets and costumes aren't cheap. In fact, to replace them all for the Nutcracker, it would cost around $2.5 million. The organization's annual budget is just under 10 million bucks, but that money goes towards bringing in new ballets and choreographers. They are gonna, yeah. So, in an effort to reach that $2.5 million figure, the Colorado Ballet is doing something new using GoFundMe. Now, the intent of GoFundMe was to get everybody involved, certainly not to take away from other people and their GoFundMe uh, projects. The ballet is only asking for a hundred grand through the site. Hopefully there's some interest there. In a perfect world, they'd love to debut everything brand new for their 60th season next year. Very good. It's a great group there and I hope they reach their goal. You know, every single person you met during this program has one thing in common. They're all dedicated to their own individual cause, which is fitting for this last story because you're about to meet a teacher from Lakewood who's all about dedication. All right, so five. For what it's worth, the research being done in Shanna Etzmiller's classroom. So you have about 25 more minutes. Allow students to see and understand biology. For a group of four cup. In a hands-on way. So they were given a problem. How do we design a pill so that a, a fifth grader can take it without it harming her stomach? Do you need some stomach acid? Okay, I'm gonna go get you some stomach acid. Mrs. Etzmiller's world revolves around science. It, it takes about 15 to 30 minutes to get from the mouth to the small intestine. So much so, while other teachers take the summer off. Okay, let me get you more flowers. She pours her time and energy. All right, there you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Into learning more okay. about. <laughs> I've done internships for the last two summers in uh, bioscience companies. See if you can get that lower. That's right. She spends her off months learning new research. How'd you guys figure out your fraction? What did you guys do? And shares that newfound knowledge with her students. I want to make sure that my students have the scientific skills um, needed to go right into a science career outside of high school. Oh, you're going to drink it? 
Awesome. No, don't drink it. Her strong work ethic has made a difference. The Colorado Bioscience Institute named me um, Educator of the Year. While showing her students anything in life is possible, <laughs> especially with dedication right. and so, determination. All right, how are we doing over here? That's the sort of teacher any student would be lucky to have. All right, guys, that about does it for this edition of Colorado. If you have a story idea for me, I'd love to hear about it. The best way to reach me is on Facebook. You can find me at facebook.com slash reporter Kevin Torres. Shoot me a message. I check them daily. Thanks so much for watching this digital edition of Colorado. I'm Kevin Torres, and I'll see you down the road.